Our man Chris Jones out of the UK, rugbypass.com. He rides for Times Online and Sunday Times. We'll talk about Roger Federer and his imminent retirement in just a sec. But Chris, finally, a French referee giving us here in New Zealand a little bit of ooh la la at the end of a test match. Yes, because, you know, any team that leads, that leads 31-13 in Melbourne against the, uh, the Wallabies really needs a lot of help, doesn't it? Because they're obviously going to try and throw it away. What, what is up with you guys? Oh, Why do you need it, one of the most eccentric referees out there to help you uh, beat the Wallabies when you, you actually beat them, I think, was it two or three times during that match? Because we kept... I mean, it would, would, wouldn't it have been appalling if Nick White's kick had won the game? Crikey, wouldn't have heard the last of it. But, uh, but there is a general feeling, you know, isn't it nice on one level just to see a referee pinging the Aussies for gamesmanship? It's there's, there's a certain part of you which thinks, oh, well, you know, they've done it over the years so many times. Somebody's picked him up on it. But in terms of uh, of the of the game for it to finish like that, it was. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a, an outstanding match uh, of, of of varying qualities. I mean, from the first moment where the Aussies couldn't catch a kickoff, you thought this is going to be a belter. But it turned out to be one of those matches that will be replayed and replayed because people won't believe how it ends. 39-35 in the year 2000 when the beloved Jonah RIP scored that try in the corner. We were up 21-0 or 24-0 after about five minutes. Remember that one? Very similar kind of match. So much to absorb from it. Look, in the end... We burgled it, no question about it, and we relied, you know, in the, on 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 a technicality from the French ref. After he did warn their halfback, he did warn him, he did warn him, he did warn him. The other thing that came out of it, though, is that if he had ruled to the letter of the law, or or with any kind of common sense, Darcy Swain not only would have gone, but basically the guy should be out for the rest of the year. That was one of the most despicable acts on a rugby field. You don't hit a prone leg like that. What a coward! Absolutely. He was he was wafting around yellow cards for various offences. Something pointed out to him, and this is where a TMO really came 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 good, wasn't it? He showed him a really despicable act which could have ended the opposition player's career. And he doesn't red card him. I don't understand it. It's again, but we're talking about Reynard. You can't guarantee anything with him. Did you see the the uh, the, the pick of the coach's box with the All Blacks at the end? And poor old Foz looked like a dead goldfish there, didn't he, with about two minutes to go. Look, the All Blacks couldn't close a car door at the moment. And and this obsession with silly rah-rah super rugby where you 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 have to keep, or you think you've got to keep scoring tries and keep scoring points. At 31-13, you get down there end. What has changed about rugby and the simplicity of test rugby, Chris, that get down their end, dominate the territory so they can't get up yours and score? That's how you win a test match. I don't know what the hell is going on with our guys. Now, we've, we've spoken about this before, mate. Your DNA has become infected by Super Rugby. I mean, there were there were moments in that game where you saw a, a New Zealand team working it out. That lovely little chip by by Bowden for the try was, was just lovely, you know, lovely game awareness. And then it goes out the window. Mm. And for, for 20 minutes, you guys just lose the plot. And it used to be so difficult to stop a, a, an all-black team with a lead of 31-30, you basically might as well just come off the There's pitch. A, you're done. done but, now, but now, teams keep playing because they know you're going to give away penalties, you're going to miss your line at jumpers, you're going to make the sort of basic errors that we keep on talking about. And it just, I'm, I am absolutely amazed that this hasn't been drummed out of them by now because this is going to become a problem just a year out from the World Cup. You're not showing that ruthlessness that needs to be part of your DNA and always was part of your DNA. What have you done with it? Roger Federer, he's got to go down as one of the greatest players ever, surely, to walk onto a tennis court. It goes without saying, doesn't it? Absolutely. And I would uh, I would say, in, in my opinion, my humble opinion, he is the greatest. And I say that because of his excellence and, the, and where he took the game to during that period, particularly during that period, 2003, 2007, where he won 10 Grand Slam singles titles, including five Wimbledons. He forced the other players in the game to get better. And the reason that we have Novak and Rafa, you know, fighting it out with 22 and 21 ahead of him, is because he forced them to find another level in their own tennis. And the same he did with Andy Murray. And it's going to be a fantastic week next week when he says goodbye, you know, to competitive tennis. He will still be playing exhibition stuff. When he plays at the Labour Cup, where Europe against the world, well, the rest of the world might as well not turn up because the team representing Europe is Roger Federer, 
Novak Djokovic, Rafa Nadal, and Andy Murray. Now, I know one of them's got a metal hip, one can't feel his foot, and one can't get into any Grand Slams, and Roger's got three knee operations. But those four will still be worth every single penny that people will pay for those tickets. And now those tickets, you might as well, there's no point trying to ask for a ticket. You won't get it. Now he's made that decision to quit. The rivalry with Rafa and the fact that Rafa has dominated that rivalry across all tournaments, including the Grand Slams, does that put any kind of an asterisk beside Roger Federer when you say that he's the greatest ever? Well, the, the asterisk is always going to be that one French Open victory, isn't it? Because clay wasn't his surface, just as grass really isn't Rafa's surface. So, you know, French dominated by Rafa, Wimbledon, no one's won as many Wimbledon as, as Roger. And that's where you saw them at their absolute zenith, that you know, the way they play the sport uh, and their particular strengths came out on those surfaces. Yes, they battled out on the hard courts where Roger did pretty well as well. But, you know, Roger and Clay never really was, you know, great bedfellows. And so that would always be used against him. You know, the, the, he wasn't able to dominate on Clay. He won other Clay tournaments other than Roland Garros. But it was it, it would always be that stick that the Rafa fans will, will beat him with, and fine, yeah, I can, yeah, I'll, I'll accept that he wasn't on all the surfaces. He wasn't the greatest player who operated during that period because Rafa was there. But I would say his impact on the sport, and you can go back to his he, uh, the name of the tournament that he's playing in next week, Rod Laver. Roger loves Laver and what he did for the sport, and you'd put Laver alongside Roger. Uh, and going forward, we may may say, well, Novak's the one who came out of this group as uh, as the best of them in terms of number of Grand Slams won. But in terms of what he did to the sport, the way he elevated it, both on and off the court, and he was absolutely magnificent and still is as a figurehead for the sport, and he will have a big influence in tennis going forward. That 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 that's what that is what makes him, in my eyes, the top. Chris Jones with us. Finally then, you know, when, when you talk about, I, I, this is a quote I use often, you know, you can be a world champion at anything, but are you a world champion person? And when you get to combine both of those things, and I look at Serena Williams, and as much as I respect what she's done in terms of what she's won, on court her behaviour at the times was just embarrassing to her and to everyone else. And the fact that it's glossed over now actually really does uh, stick in my craw. I look at Novak and, you know, just the, the arrogance and contempt that he's displayed for the sport as well. Roger Federer is Rod Laver. He is a, a real gentleman. How much does that mean? Because it means a lot to me. What, what does it mean when you look at his whole tennis career? Is it that important or not? It's very important. You know, his first coach, Peter Carty, the Australian, who died tragically in 2002 in a car accident, uh, he turned this slightly wild, uh, ponytailed youngster into a class apart. And, and what he understood, Roger, as he, as he got better and better, was that he had an impact on the sport, which meant that he could influence the sport, and, he, and in, in all ways for good. And he said, you know, I, I, he said to himself, I was given a special talent. And he recognized that. And he didn't waste it. And he didn't slash balls out of the court. He didn't swear at his opponents. Do you know, he, he never once retired injured in a match throughout his career. Now, he just played through pain, particularly in 2008 against Andy Murray when his back was in pieces. He would not step off that court and say, I give up. He, you know, he loved the sport. And as he said, he was a ball kid from Basel who lived a dream and he can't believe what he's done. And, you know, did he get his rewards? A billion, a billion dollars is what Forbes estimates he earned in, 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 in endorsements and, and winnings on court. So yes, he got fantastically rewarded for that, but he could have been arrogant. He could have been someone, you know, who, who didn't get the respect of every single player he played against. And he has got that respect and that as a legacy, boy, you can't buy that even with a billion dollars.